Welcome back to Night Mind, friends. It's a nice night, isn't it? Definitely warmer than it was last, and I'm quite thankful for it. Believe it or not, I appreciate spring almost as much as autumn. We won't be going outside to see the flower buds, though. We're going to stay right here and turn on a very exclusive video game. But speaking of outdoor travel, I want to reintroduce a friend of ours for the start of the season, Raycon. Raycon's everyday E25 earbuds are the perfect companion to emerging spring, the incoming summer, and countless moments beyond. It's more than music. You can use the E25 earbuds to get away from screens while still enjoying your favorite content. And come on, it's no secret that a lot of you listen to my videos rather than watch them. So how about queuing up a Nightmind video while you head out on a moonlit stroll, or while you finish cleaning up the garden bed around sunset? Personally, I live in New England, and we had a few snowstorms in a row back in February, so I had to go out and shovel multiple times for hours, and my Raycon earbuds made each occasion pass by so much faster. I was seriously thankful I had them and got to actually enjoy the act of shoveling snow. I'm really sure my patience would have hit its end early, and I might have just thrown the shovel without these earbuds. And now I know I'm covered for any moment I want to go enjoy some fresh air and move around a bit. Podcasts, audiobooks, news, YouTube videos, and of course, music. Raycon earbuds give you 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and the best compact design I've ever seen. The things you enjoy indoors don't have to stop once you step outside. Break away from the screen with Raycon's E25 earbuds this season, and take 15% off your order by going to buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind. That's buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind, or just click the link in the video description box below. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and for their help back in February when the snow seriously would not stop. I'll be enjoying the E25 earbuds on my springtime walks through the cemetery now that the weather's warmer. Now, speaking of cemeteries, I'd say it's time we get into our subject for tonight. I don't say that just because we'll be dealing with communication from beyond the grave, but because, quite frankly, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of grey. Diminish is an unfiction project about a video game, and I'm not quite sure how to begin talking about it. Whenever we cover the video game story subgenre, it's because the project in question has done something the others haven't, and it stands on its own as a unique story, with unique presentation, and is easily identifiable as its own creation, even if there's inspiration to be found from its predecessors. This is absolutely the case for Diminish, but it's surprisingly different in its execution and shockingly honest about everything it is, to a point that covering it with my usual method is challenging in a few ways. Diminish is an immersive narrative series that takes place entirely on YouTube, and all the videos are part of a playthrough series by the uploader. And I don't mean playthroughs as you'd usually see them, with heavy editing and major cuts for time and pacing. The uploader, Will, keeps a lot of the footage in which he just fails to accomplish whatever he's trying to do for minutes at a time, because Diminish is a rage game with only one real checkpoint, which was made by his departed sibling and left for him as the only player in the world. Will made a promise. He needs to play the game, but he also needs to record it, and he's not supposed to cut anything if it involves his reactions and emotions. He promised the game's creator before death that he would record it raw, so all of his impressions exist. But because this is a rage game, most of the time you spend watching will be genuinely irritating or boring. And there's absolutely something of merit to be said about that, but it's a double-edged sword, and one edge of that sword cuts right into my usual protocol when opening a video. I can't say it full-hearted this time. I can't give you my old tired line, watch the series first, then come back to me here. Because I don't know whether to recommend that you watch this series or not before going forward with my coverage. The easy answer, the obvious answer, is that you should. You absolutely should. This is totally worth it for all of its moments of gold, the effort that's gone into it, the impact that its story beats have, the genuine first-hand experience, and the undeniable fact that some of the moments that go into the story are beautiful, and they really stand as key points to learn from for any creator. Some of these moments, they make the journey worth it and they deserve high praise. But if you go for a full run, you're going to be in a similar position as the player himself, suffering through trial after trial after trial of running, jumping, climbing, and dying, only to watch it all happen again and again and again, sometimes for 10 whole minutes without much change. While well, you get frustrated and Will gets frustrated, and you both wonder why you don't just cut the torture out and skip ahead to a point when something actually happens. 
Suffering alongside Will as he plays Diminish and accumulates a ridiculously high death score is part of the artistic message and the experience. It's intentional, it clearly is. But while you do get it, and it gives you an appreciation of what this uploader character goes through, this just isn't pleasant for a viewer. Most of your time watching will be spent wondering when Will is finally going to reach whatever is important in the story, and half of that time wishing he would just shut up and fast forward instead of awkwardly trying to fill the dead air with quirky humor and moments of stopping to pet his cat for five minutes. <laughs> because it sure isn't making the waiting game any easier, Will. We can't even laugh with you anymore after you get destroyed on the same set of spikes for a tenth time and have another fit at the keyboard. Ugh, oh, but because of the nature of Diminish and his promise, you're both damned to this gray plane of repetitive torment with a bitter obligation to keep your mouse off the timeline. Look at this main character's face. Even they know how this feels. Apollo doesn't have time for this either, Will. There's no substitute for going through any unfiction project in its genuine, unabridged form. That is true. That will always be true. And it's especially true for Diminish. If I sent you all off to just go through the whole thing first, I know a lot of you would come back and say, totally worth it because plenty of the story moments in Diminish feel like rewards for you surviving the endurance tests. If you've got the stamina, the patience, and 4 hours, 28 minutes, and 18 seconds to spare, then watch Diminish in its raw form as it currently exists, because this project certainly isn't over, it's only just completed Act 1. This is going to be a very long project when it's done. Otherwise, hang here with me and we'll go through it unbound by the same set of rules that Will's tied to. The choice is yours. I'll put the link to a playlist in the video description for you. So, if you're ready to embark, let's get going. Diminish first appeared on November 7, 2020, displaying its title screen and a simple tagline, A Game for My Brother. The video description notes that a viewer has created a Diminish Discord server, which the uploader doesn't know if he has the heart to join, but is available for those interested. Below that, he writes, Keeping my promise, finally press start. It's definitely not going to get easier from here, but a start is better than nothing. As previously stated, this series runs exactly like a blind let's play with minimal cuts, so there's a lot of what would be dead air if Will weren't speaking. We're not going to play the majority of that, but let's experience the opening so you can get a feel for Will's personality. Okay. <clears throat> am I doing this? I think I am. Yeah, I'm doing this. Okay. <sighs> How does one go about starting something like this? <laughs> hey guys, it's Wacky Will! Welcome to my Let's Play! No, not doing that. Ugh. Yeah, I've never done anything quite like this before. I don't even know if anybody's gonna be watching this. But, it'll be out there. Uh, no turning back! Uh, okay, uh, if anybody out there is watching this, you might have a lot of questions. I wouldn't blame you. Uh, but you can fully expect that this is going to go places. Probably dark, creepy places, for reasons. Kitty! Uh, I don't know how much I want to let on right now. What I will say is, I'm probably the only person in the world who has this game. If that's not the case, I kind of want to know about it, because that'd be weird. Uh. Kitty! Uh, I'm just stalling at this point. I've been putting this off for so long. So, if it's all the same to you, I think I'll press start. Yep, it's time to press start. See what this is all about. This is my first time seeing any of this. It's all as new to me as it is to you. Even after all this time. Has it been four years? Yeah, it's been four years. Oh my god. Yeah, it's time to press start. Yeah, okay. Promise is a promise. Here we go. What do you got for me? Oh, okay. The game opens with text from its creator, something that will be happening fairly often. Diminish was designed almost entirely as a personal message, and as such, acts more as a diary at times than other games, producing direct text instead of subtext. The creator takes a moment to speak lovingly to their character, Apollo, saying how wonderful it is to imagine them being guided by Will's hand, and how it's like the two of you are prying a vice grip off their chest. Will explores the first area, collecting carrots and falling through invisible holes in the floor, figuring out mechanics and making comments about how this is clearly designed as a rage game, which he's not surprised by knowing its creator and his relationship to them. 
Wall jumping and death via spikes is mostly what we're in for over the next few minutes as Will gets a feel for the gameplay. The first point of interest comes from a successful air dash from atop a ledge, when Apollo encounters a broken figure on the ground convulsing next to its severed arm. It apologizes for its unsightly state and urges Apollo not to be concerned, wishing to be left alone so it doesn't cause any trouble. As a result of this encounter, Apollo's status changes from curious to sad, and Will explores the pause menu. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that boy. Wow. <laughs> Looking glamorous. Um... Okay. 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 Soup of the day. Oh, there's- there's something there! Nice! It's literally a soup of the day. Oh, there's more. Oh, okay. The creator shares their thoughts on gazpacho and the idea of cold soup, stating how, in their opinion, soup ought to be warm. Unfortunately, they've been feeling like a cold soup lately. Soup that definitely wasn't meant to be cold. I'm dripping away. I can feel it. My container is broken and I'm leaking out. I try so hard not to look at it, the seepage. The wax deforming, melting away, where candle used to be. I can't even tell the difference. I don't know if I'm the feeble candle or the leaky, useless soup cup. Either way, I am cold. Some part of me is wet as it leaves, leaving me vulnerable to the wind. It's not supposed to chill quite like this. So today, I am best served cold. Reading the soup of the day takes more out of Will than expected. He puts the recording down for the moment, promising to return. He comes back five days later on November 12th, now showing 50 more deaths and a new status to reflect Apollo's state, wary. Let's see how long it takes me to get back there. <sighs> That's a great start. I didn't even get any of the carrots. Good God, okay. I guess in a way it was a blessing in disguise that the power went out. It forced me to take a break and recenter and calm down a little bit because I was starting to lose my mind. Oh my god, I'm back, okay. So, yeah, um, I don't know what the deal is with this person. I'm, I tried to talk to them and nothing happens. It, I, I hate it. Uh, you know what else I hate? This jump. This is the jump that when I finally got past it, the power went out, and it's awful because you have to start it with a dash jump and then cancel it at the exact right moment and then somehow be able to correct your momentum the, in the perfect way and not freak out. That's the worst part that I can't do. <laughs> <sighs> okay, um, but I get another shot. At least I get another shot, and here we are. That was pitiful. Okay. That's to be expected. Alright, uh, at least... Okay! Oh! I thought I had it! I thought I had two in a row! Great. Just great. Just great. Just great. That was never a chance. Okay. Hmm. Back. Okay. One more shot. Come on. Oh! Okay. Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Oh! <laughs> I closed my eyes when I pressed pause, so it took me a moment to see that. I have not seen that before. That is something. And also, I have to agree. Oh my goodness. Yep. Gotta agree with Mr. Werewolf Man on that one. <sighs> After taking a few strides on the new platform, Will's sibling reappears. Considering our circumstances, you knew what you were signing up for, right? Don't worry, it'll only get worse from here. Way worse. How are you even gonna get that, anyway? What is this? <sighs> it took me this long to get back here. I'm not gonna try for that. Let's just take a look at this here. Um... Okay, I can't see that much, but it looks fairly straightforward at first. Oh... I don't want to do this. <laughs> it took me so long to get here. Just do it, dude. Come on. Oh! It's a, it's a ledge. It's a ledge. It's a ledge. Yep. That's... that's really mean. It takes about six minutes of footage before Will succeeds in making it through this spot. And that's edited footage, by the way. His death counter started at 62, and he beat this section at 99. He's rewarded with a new message. I hope you're remembering your own strength without too much issue. 
these abilities, they should feel familiar as long as you're being true to yourself. Will attempts to move on from this spot and continue his momentum, earning death number 100 and a new status. Oh god. That feeling carries into Diminished 3, in which Will takes 14 minutes and 20 seconds of edited footage and 104 more deaths to reach the next stage. Along the way, he checks the pause menu for Apollo's status. At first, it says, It's a sobering moment, the one where you realize you've been summoned for nothing but torment. When Apollo gains more deaths and becomes resigned, there is no status message. But when the next stage is reached, Apollo does have something to say. Journey always comes with a price. There is always pain. There isn't always a reward. But the meaning of the journey remains up to you. A bit further in, Will finds an arrow made of carrots and an arc over a large gap. The creator chimes in, you know what you have to do. Afraid as he is, Will performs the air dash and manages to reach the other side. Okay. Alright, now what? Whatever it is, I can do it. Whatever it is. Oh, what is that? That was certainly an unexpected change, and when Will returns in episode 4, it's been 11 days. When I touched that, whatever that was, at the end of the last video, the game crashed. And I took that as a hint to uh, <clears throat> give it a rest for a while. And now, um, logically, it would seem the next course of action should be to get that gun. So I guess it's time to do that. Here we go. Uh, yep, here we go again. Hopefully, after a few days off, there won't be too much of an erosion of skill. Uh, <laughs> that's okay, we're fine. We're gonna be fine. That's not gonna reflect the experience to come, surely. The erosion of skill keeps Will from his goal for 10 minutes of edited footage and increases the death count by 155. When he finally obtains the object he's after, Apollo's status changes from throbbing to begun. I've slumbered for what seems longer than time. My strength withered away. It's infuriating. I shudder to imagine what the atrophy has done to my seraphic physique. After this victory, Will checks out the soup of the day, lobster bisque. I won't forget a single one of those evenings when lobster was being cooked for dinner. Some of those nights, all it took was one look at the steam, and I couldn't bear to stay in the house. Other nights, I was taken by some masochistic compulsion to enter the kitchen and watch them all roast alive. Or maybe it was something different. A wavelength I was picking up on. The pure, primal energy emitted by the beings on the stove. Their spiritual death screams. There's something about seeing creatures spending their final moments on Earth burning in hell. Something that paralyzes you. Demands that you not look away. Demands that you be a witness. I don't know what I learned from those nights. I don't know if there was anything to learn. Not like that didn't matter for much longer anyway, because I'm the one on the stove now. When the messages fade, Apollo has a statement to make about what was said. We're bearing witness together. Eerie as that may have been, Will finds himself able to go on and see if collecting the white belt enables passage through the stage before. Nice, okay, here we go. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I actually don't like this at all. Um, it's just, what else can I do? I'm thinking back through the whole level. It, I just, I guess there's that troll thing at the beginning. There, there might have been some way, there might have been something over there, I don't know. It's just, I, I'm already here, I want to try this. Okay. A note I need to make before we continue. 
Even while the lengths of footage in which Will suffers instead of making progress can be anywhere from boring to excruciating, notice how each video's end so far does have a form of cliffhanger or way to compel us back. That moment absolutely beckons us to return for Diminish 5. As a creator, you might find that you don't always have a solid cliffhanger point to cut off the end of an upload, or entry, or whatever you may use for installments of your storytelling, but whenever you sense that you as a viewer would be craving more after a certain point, it's probably in your best interest to strike. It's an old adage, but it's true. Leave them wanting more. Now, let's see what Will has to say when he returns in episode 5. Hey, so I'm gonna get back into this, but before I try and figure out how to progress, I wanted to address a comment that I saw responding to one of these videos. Um, it was in regards to when I got to the end of this level, or I guess I don't know if it's the end of the level yet, I hope it is, um, but it was when I ran into the thing at the end, whatever it was, that was guarding the exit, or the next part. Um, <clears throat> and it said, uh, try jumping over it. And I was actually trying to. I didn't make that clear at all, and I'm sorry about that. I should have been mentioning how I was trying to jump when I got closer to it, but it seems like the game was stopping me from jumping when I got too close. So I just wanted to hop in really quick and show you that and prove it to you. And hopefully I will get back there right quick. It seemed like I was getting better at it, so it shouldn't... What is this? Oh! Uh, no thank you. No. No thank you. No thank you. Please. Please. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Uh, this is my first time playing this since last time, and so this is news to me. Oh, great. This is, this is great. I have so many questions. Uh, where do I even start? <sighs> could you just, could you just go away for, just, oh, okay. I didn't think it would take that many hits. <sighs> Okay, just a second, so I can... Not cool! It's clear now that Will definitely needed the white belt in order to progress, and on top of the other tricks used to illustrate his character's believability in having no knowledge or experience with this game, witnessing how he got a false ending and then experienced the same ending under a new condition allowing him to continue adds to our suspension of disbelief. When his sibling comes through to speak again, the message reads, I'm sorry. I thought this would help me feel a bit lighter about everything, but I'm getting angrier by the day. Part of me almost hopes you won't see any of this. I'm not angry at you. I'm just angry. I hate it so much. Will says he agrees with that feeling, then crosses to the next platform, where the injured person has been torn to shreds. Even the maggots are afraid to emerge now, the creator comments. The smell reminds Apollo why it felt good to give up. Apollo's status changes from sorry to regret, and says, Even now, as weak as I am, I still fear the consequences of my touch. When Will proceeds, he encounters another change. The folded over body from before is now a weathered creature. It fears that in moments, the last of its true essence will explode from its eyes, and it requests death. Apollo is sorry for not waking it up, but is told it makes no difference. Will fulfills its last wish, then finds there's a note in place of the white belt on the other side. It takes him a while to collect the note, and when he enters the pause screen, he only succeeds in getting bits of information about the note, but doesn't really get to read it. For now, we only know it says, hi. Will takes a while to get through the next segment. His sibling reappears to mark his progress. You're so close, and yet I can't feel you today. Some days I feel you so clearly, it's like I'm actually in that forbidden future, watching you play. Today it feels like you slid through my fingers, and yet this text manifests, crawling onto a computer screen. From right now, into long ago. But you're the only one who can see it. I never will. I think it's time to spell out what's been related to us in bits and pieces through the game. During his playthroughs, Will hasn't been very forthcoming about the situation, even as far as five episodes in. But these first five episodes and the next set do a lot to paint in the details you can most likely tell what the picture is already. Diminish is a game built by Will Sibling while they were dying as a method of coping with their situation, confronting the end of their life, and making a lasting bond with their brother that would outlast them. Everything in Diminish reflects its creator and the issue they face. The title itself, Diminish, really highlights what its creator was experiencing. Their life, their body, everything they've known is diminishing. 
The game's emphasis on Apollo's death count and its insane difficulty reflects the theme. Over and over, Apollo confronts death, and it takes an enormous amount of effort to move forward and make progress. How do you keep going with anything when all you'll continue to experience is death, failure, and strife? Eventually, something's going to diminish. Your patience, your self-esteem, your hope. The characters Apollo has come across show their state of defeat. A body convulsing on the ground, arms severed, not even wishing to bother Apollo for help. A body folded over, saying nothing when Apollo lands on it, and then being transformed into a more hideous state that leaves it asking for help at last, to snuff its life out. And as this happens, we experience it with Will, who promised to play. He's tied into this game, and yet, for all his struggle, at the end of his journey, he'll still be rewarded with... Death. The creator, his sibling, is dead. No amount of strife endured through the game to see its ending is going to change that. There is life in the creator through the game, but the event that spawned Diminish and Will's playthrough can never be reversed. This angle of futility present in the game on Will's side is as clear as it is for the creator. In Diminish Episode 6, Will makes enough progress to earn another message. Suddenly, I'm not so sure you're actually there. I'm losing my nerve. This could be a time capsule never uncovered lost in the furnace of a dying earth. I am here now, but soon I am a fossil. These words lie in dormancy. They don't know if they've found eyes. The meditation on death and our constant confrontation with its eventuality may seem adequately explored using the death counter, but for those who may think the checkpoint system cheats that illustrative touch, Diminish 8 has something to say to you. Anyway... What I want to try right now is a suggestion that I saw in the comments. So this is a freshly new game. I just started a new game, and you see the checkpoint here is not active. It starts you outside the checkpoint. The suggestion I saw from a commenter was, before you step into a checkpoint, hi kitty, <laughs> before you step into a checkpoint, try jumping into the spikes. I don't like this at all, but at this point, I'm willing to try just about anything. And so, this happens to be within the realm of anything. And we're going to try that anything right now, to see if it's going to spawn us somewhere special where we can finally go somewhere else. Let's do it. Diminish 9 sees us in the next moment with Apollo, impaled on the spikes. Will has a few options, and they change as he makes selections, challenging his beliefs and emotions in the moment. Apollo is not dead. They would be if they were mortal, according to the check option. But Apollo is very painfully alive. And as Will struggles trying to save Apollo, several unrelated things in the world occur and continue. Life goes on. Will is quietly suffering, trying to reverse a horrible event, gripped by the most emotional and important tragedy in the world at this moment. And the world is ignorant, indifferent, and unchanged. An Olympian in training sits in a hospital bed. She didn't sleep well last night. Yesterday, she was going to live forever. But now the doctor brings her family in. Notice how long the screen stays here. We can't hear Will, just the game. Not even his breathing is evident. You can probably guess why. But he clearly hesitates at this moment. It's stage four. She doesn't have much time left. She falls into the supermassive black hole. She is ripped apart at a molecular level. She fantasizes a world where she was never born, where her family is free of this. She wants to kill God with her bare hands. She prays. Her carefully strengthened heart still beats. This continues, but not for much longer. And there, Will's options fade. Apollo gains consciousness and reflects on the nature of pain, how it is mortal, how it can be outlived, how they've outlived pain too many times. If you let pain die while you still live, Something goes wrong. I think you're supposed to make room, 
so it has somewhere to stay with you, then you can nurture it into something else. Apollo notes that being immortal isn't their choice. Whether it's taken as a curse or a blessing, however, is up to them, and their choice now is to make this moment a gift. I'm forced to survive this, but I will grow from it on my own. Hopefully, somehow, you will too. I'm going to help you pick up the shards of glass. I'm so lucky to have the chance. If you'll believe it, I... I'm reminded how lucky I really am. Because my spine is severed, and yet I can feel every single nerve in my legs pleading for death. Which means... It's time to stand up. And so Apollo breaks the spikes, stands up and removes them. An act that causes excruciating pain. And when they finish, they pick up a piece and see their reflection. Yes, it's true. That experience will forever be broken glass beneath my memory steps. But I just picked up a shard, and I choose to carry it with me. I hope you can look through it too. Don't forget, you are alive. It's difficult to imagine how much more diminished there actually is, because this moment really underlines the main drive behind its creator's work. It is allegory, and works precisely in the way Apollo presents it, a reflection. Pain is mortal, but it is important. There can and will be moments that we meet the spikes, and the pain will be immense. But even a god can feel pain and learn from it. To feel pain is to know that you are alive, and if you live, you cannot just lie there on the spikes. You have to get up. It's going to be agony, but you have to get up. And when the pain recedes, you can't leave it all behind. You need to take a piece of it with you, to remind you of how it felt to experience agony like that, and live. Because you are alive. And as much as that hurt, it did not kill you. Will's sibling was, as you may have guessed, the girl in the hospital. An Olympian who trained to compete in the games until she was diagnosed with a terminal disease. Will finally speaks on all of this in episode 10, seven and a half minutes in. So, what was probably being made obvious was, this game was made by my twin sister. Um, my baby sister, because I came out first. Um, okay, keep going. Her name was Theodora, which is a f***ing gorgeous name, by the way, and it really grew on her when she got older, but she hated it when she was little, so she made everyone call her Ted. And when we got to elementary school, everyone started calling her Teddy, because she was the sweetest person in the world, and she was constantly giving people hugs. Okay. God, that went off the rails so hard. Uh, <laughs> good lord. There was a point to that, I swear. Uh, yeah, the big point. Yeah, the big one. Uh, four years ago, Teddy was diagnosed with leukemia, stage four. She had no chance. And then a few months later, she was dead. She was 22. It was absolutely pointless. It will never, ever make sense. Never. It will never make sense. But in that few months, she made this game. Uh, because she had a lifetime worth of art inside her. And this is all she could belt out before she was silenced. It took me four years to play it, and I hate myself for that. I hate myself for that. But you don't need to know that. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could take that out. But I've already broken my promise enough at this point. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I've already muted my myself for an entire video. I took down one. Oh, God. And I've, I've been so cryptic about what the promise is. It's nothing, like, super crazy. It's just, we made a promise that after she was gone, I would play this game and record it and put it out there for the world. And part of it was that I couldn't do any re-recordings or second takes. I can make cuts for time as long as I'm not saying anything noteworthy, because whenever I talk about the game, I have to put it in. That's the part of the promise that I broke. But yeah, ideally, it's going to be all of my organic first feelings and everything. That's the point. So I guarantee when I actually make good on that, it's going to be an absolute mess of incoherence. But it's what she wanted, so that's exactly what you're going to get. If I have the guts.
<sighs> feels kind of good, actually. It feels kind of good. It feels kind of good. All right. I wasn't expecting that. But I'll go ahead and leave the details there for now because while it's a bit of a catharsis, it is also confusing and exhausting. So it's it's a it's a baby step. It j just like making progress in this stupid game. It's not a you, I can't expect to get all the way to the end like on a single attempt when I don't know what's ahead. I just have to take baby steps and taking another step <laughs> and not dying before the first freaking jump is a victory. It's what I was telling myself earlier. It's it's the process. It's all about just making progress. And that is really what it's about for Teddy in putting Will through these circumstances rather than just leaving him the game. It's the process. Throughout the other videos, we come to learn a bit more about Teddy. She was training as an Olympic swimmer, and we come to learn about Will through her eyes. For all you might expect of him from his presentation, Will has a backstory of being an outcast and clinging to games and escapist media during childhood, and was often confronted by adults who were worried about his lack of direction and general development. Teddy's memories of these moments are evidently seared into her brain. Not only does she bring us these events in text, we come to find out there was a period in school when Will was made fun of for eating carrots with peanut butter. That's how much he was picked on, for something as simple as a lunch that's commonly packaged as a combo on store shelves. And yes, that's why the collectibles in the game are carrots. They were twins, and Will jokingly says Teddy was his baby sister. But in the telling, we see who actually felt older, and how fierce the drive was for Teddy to see Will grow past his moments of pain. Faced with her own death at 22 after years of honing her body to be in the Olympics, with no way to outtrain her condition, Teddy was left with only one mission. Help her brother to survive her death. What we see in what remains of Diminish Act 1 are a lot of additional touches to illustrate the theme, like this giant skull that tells Apollo it's just in its nature to come after them if they try to move to the next platform. A lot of moments from Teddy and Will reflecting on their past, and unexpected pitfalls in what looks like solid ground. We come to find more through Teddy's messages how much keeping an eye out for her brother was on her mind while growing up, and how that really translated into the work she's done making Diminish. The final episode before the first act closes, Diminish 17, is the longest. 59 minutes, 7 seconds. But if you're curious about this at all, I'm going to leave the experiences within unspoiled. I know, I know. I make a big deal at the start about whether or not to even watch this yourself first, and now I want to send you off to what we haven't covered on your own. But going through the timeline again, especially the content of Diminish 9, it really does bring to mind how some of these bits are so much better left to direct experience. This is not our usual kind of project. There's no plot twisting to unravel for us, no big secrets to examine, no one-frame images to catch, no big pieces in the future that we can tie back to the past and say, oh wow, this actually means this now, we understand. But that's just for this initial coverage. Diminish has its odd pieces that are worth discussing, but I feel it's too early to chalk them up to anything beyond Teddy's emotions at play or subconscious touches on her part, and even a lot of those may end up explained directly to us by Teddy through her messages. Our patients may provide us explanations for some of the stranger elements more than any hypotheses that we could put forward. Diminish is different from a lot of what we explore, because it's actually very straightforward, and some of the questions we may have are easily answered just by thinking in parallels. For instance, Knowing what you do now about Tenny, why was Apollo chosen and represented this way as the main character? Why is soup of the day an element of the pause menu? Put yourself in Teddy's position during her final months, thinking about her life so far and her environment, and a lot is going to make sense. Skip through Will's extended moments of gameplay failure if you're inclined to do so, but keep an eye out for pause menu shots and changes in the scenery. I believe it is worth it to go forward from here yourself, especially for Diminished 17. As mentioned, the playlist for Diminish is in the video description below. We went through everything in depth up through Diminish 10, except for Diminish 7, in which Will sits down and gets to explore Apollo's personal notes. That's a great character building moment that lets us step into a new corner of the experience, and I highly recommend watching it. And for those of you who choose a longer, personal journey for Diminish, can you do me a favor? Come back here when you're done and give me your honest thoughts in the comments about this series. Its execution, its premise, how it handles things, your feelings about it, your feelings about Will, everything. 
There are several aspects of the series that really seem capable of splitting a room, and I'm very curious to know how you feel. It's a different take on the subgenre, that's for sure, and your reaction really interests me. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video, thanks to all of you for watching, and thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who make sure I'm supplied with carrots and, if I so choose on any given day, a fine soup. Not only do they keep the channel running, they're the power behind the Nightmind Index for new and undiscovered unfiction projects, which actually, Diminish is listed on as a title. And while you're there, if you really enjoy stuff like Diminish, check out this one, Illusion Lock. As detailed in the entry, Illusion Lock is an unfinished game created by Edgar that revolves around collecting teeth. He records a playthrough for an audience, but not everything he says is allowed to be heard. Something else has final cut over Edgar's content. That was the deal. I'll put the link to the Illusion Lock channel in the video description too, so you can take a look at that one. And remember, this is just one of over 80 projects listed in the index right now, so you never know what you might find exploring the entries. If you'd like to support Nightmind and the Index, you can join Patreon for just $2 a month. Stick around to see the names of all the awesome creatures of the night on Patreon at the end of this video. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne. And like an Olympian who just doesn't quit, I'll be back again, and again, and again, and again, and again, real soon. Sleep tight.